Thank you very much. Yep. Yes. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, family businesses, can everyone hear me? Yeah. Yes. Family businesses are the backbone of the economy, the global economy. According to the Family Firm Institute, which is an association of academic researchers and advisors whose specialty is family business, they represent 70 to 90 percent of global gross domestic product. 70 to 90 percent. That is a lot of business. Now, when you hear family business, some of you might think that means mom and pop in the <coughs> local grocery store, the local restaurant. But family business is bigger than that. Some of the world's largest companies are family businesses. Here in the United States, we have Walmart. That's the Walton family. We have Ford Motor Company. That, of course, is the Ford family. We have the New York Times. That's the Oaks Stolzberger family. And here in Philadelphia, we have Comcast, and that's the Roberts family. Those are all publicly traded companies, but they are family controlled. Now you think, how can they be family companies if they're owned by the public? Well, these companies are, they have a special class of stock that family members have that gives them more votes in picking the board of directors. The board of directors controls the strategic direction of the company, so these families that have an extra vote, extra votes in picking them, they control the board, which controls the direction. Now, the strategic direction of some of those companies, Walmart and Comcast, has been questioned. That's outside the scope of this. Some shareholder activists think that families shouldn't have control, extra voting control, but they do. And I would say that at least from a profitability standpoint, family control is not such a bad thing because according to a study from 2003 by researchers Ronald Anderson and David Reeve of Temple University, that's another local shout out, family controlled public companies perform better than public companies that have no family connection. So there's that. Now there are also privately controlled large family companies such as Mars that makes Skittles and M&Ms and Three Musketeers and Twix and we have uh, S.C. Johnson that makes Glade and Windex and Ziploc. And um, again, if you want to talk about questionable strategic direction, we have Coke Industries and the Coke Brothers um, that a lot of people have issues with, but it's a private company, so shareholders don't have any say. It's family control. Anyway, the point is that family companies are more than just mom and pop. But some families have been very, very successful in passing their businesses on through the generations. Um, the oldest family company, according to research by My Magazine, Family Business Magazine, the oldest family company in the country is Zildjian Symbol. If anyone has gone to a rock concert or a jazz, jazz group and seen Zildjian name on the symbols, if you look at the drummer, that company dates from 1623. They were founded in what was once called Constantinople. Now it's Istanbul. They moved to Massachusetts, um, and they have been around since 1623. They are now owned and managed by the 14th and 15th generation of the family. 14th and 15th generation. That is a lot of generations probably don't meet a lot of people saying, I'm a 14th generation family business owner. In fact, we found that there are, there are a handful of others from the 1600s that, again, is older than this country, uh, but they're mostly small family farms and it's easier to keep that going. So um, you might wonder why you, why you don't meet many more people who say, I'm an eighth generation or seventh generation. Um, that's because it is difficult to keep the family business going. There are some statistics that people in the family business world have heard over and over, and they sound awfully scary, uh, that only 30% of family companies make it to the second generation, and only 13% make it to the third, and less than 3% make it past third. Jim, you're in a family business. Have you heard those statistics? Everybody hears those statistics. You'll hear them again if you... Now that you listen for them, you'll probably hear them. Well, there's a problem with those statistics. 
actually. They were done, they come from a study by Dr. John Ward of Kellogg School of Management at Northwestern, and that study was done in 1987. I bet there are some of you here who weren't even born in 1987, right? Some of you, some people. Kids, get off my lawn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so yeah, that's a study, and it was done um, with only 200 companies from only one state, Illinois, and only one industry, manufacturing. So uh, they, they're not exactly statistically significant, right? Um, and also, what is the definition of family business success or failure? Example from recent news, last year, the Washington Post, Catherine Graham, follow the money, Watergate, also, sorry, before your time for snappers. Um, that, that company was family owned for four generations and then the Graham family last year sold the Washington Post to Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon. So you would say that the Washington Post was not successful in being transferred beyond the fourth generation. But the Graham family is still in business together. They still own Kaplan for-profit education and they still own Slate as the website, and they still own TV stations, and they own other companies that have nothing to do with media. So, um, so they um, are still in business together. They are still together, and uh, they're still operating a successful company. So have they failed? I don't think so. So you have to look differently at uh, what constitutes family business success or failure. Now, I want you all to pretend that I have PowerPoint technology. <laughs> pretend that I'm showing you this PowerPoint. <laughs> this is why it is so difficult. This Venn diagram, which comes from Dr. John Davis and Dr. Renato Tagiri, also from the 80s, not published until the 90s, and no one has found a better model, although people have tried. The three circles, family membership, business ownership, and business management. So business ownership being an owner of business management. Three overlapping circles. And I have to wrap this up, so I'll just say family systems operate according to equality and all for one and one for all, and business operates in getting out the deadwood. So two different systems, and that's why it's, it's hard to, uh, to know which hat you're wearing when you're discussing family and business. And I could go on, but I won't because the, I was given the red card. So thank you very much for allowing me to talk a little bit about what I do every day when I'm not here. Thank you.